So the commonest cause of squint in adults is actually squints left over from childhood. So about 5% of children end up with having, having squints and a lot of them undergo treatment in childhood but they're still there when they're an adult. In fact they often recur, uh, often worse than they were as a child. So that's the commonest cause and so the people we see have often had patching, glasses, squint surgery as a child and then the squint returns in middle age or any age really from 20 until 80. Then the other causes of squints in adults are things which put the eyes out of alignment such as trauma, head trauma, facial trauma, eye, eye socket fractures, neurological conditions such as MS, some brain tumours and then you've got things like thyroid eye disease or inflammation around the, around the eye. All of those things can, can affect the muscles of the eyes and then therefore give a squint. Squint impacts quality of life in two ways. One is in terms of visual function, so your ability to see with both eyes a single image. So there are patients who have squints who suffer from double vision, seeing two of objects. Some people don't have double vision, but they have visual confusion. So an object which is off to the side can appear in the centre and get in the way of things. And that can cause immense problems with people's lives. They can have problems driving, reading, working on a computer, even walking around, especially things like going downstairs, can be quite a difficulty. So that's the, the functional side of things. Then the other side of, of squint in adults is how it affects someone's appearance and that affects their life due to the effect it has on interaction, social interaction, self-confidence, self-esteem. Uh, many people are almost paralysed by lack of, 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 self, lack of confidence in, in meeting people for the first time, whether that be in a social environment or a work environment, even Zoom meetings uh, can be affected by that. So, the other thing about those people uh, in whom it's related to appearance is that they very often have some visual problems as well which they've just got used to and accepted as normal. There are some non-surgical options. Of course with any surgery one option is just living with it and that is unfortunately an option that is required for some patients because surgery is not possible either because they've had too many operations in the past or because the risks of surgery might be too much for them to go through with it. Apart from that, there are some squints which can be helped with prism glasses. That's normally to correct double vision and they do have a, a very good role and they help many patients. They have some issues. They don't correct large angles of, uh, of double vision. They don't help double vision in all directions uh, and they can be cumbersome and expensive. Then you've got Botox or botulinum toxin injections. It's the same drug that's used to uh, treat wrinkles and that can temporarily paralyze a muscle and allow the eyes to go straight for a period of a few months. It wears off. So really then surgery becomes the, the final option for, for many people. So squint surgery is recommended when a squint or double vision is impacting somebody's life enough that they're willing to take the quite small risks associated with it. That is the basic equation that is going to decide if now is the right time. If somebody is troubled by their squint or double vision, it's affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis, that's when they should consider it. Then they'll be assessed and based on that assessment, a plan for surgery will be made and an assessment of the chance of success and also the risks associated with it. That discussion is had between the doctor and the patient and between them they'll come to a kind of common ground on whether surgery is indicated. So squint surgery involves moving the muscles around the eyes into different positions or increasing or reducing the strength with which they pull on the eye. So we often say that the eye muscles are like the reins on, the, on a horse. They come from behind and they pull on the front and depending on which side is pulling more the eye will turn in that particular direction. So the basic principles are you can either weaken a muscle or strengthen a muscle and depending on various combinations of weakening and strengthening you can predictably move the eye into different directions and therefore correct a squint. So we'll start with the benefits. Um, 
Squint surgery is often described by our patients as absolutely life-changing, whether that be for their appearance and regaining self-confidence, or whether that be to correct disabling double vision. It's often something which they wish they had had done many years ago. It completely changes their lives. With regard to risks, it's a very safe procedure actually. It's much safer than most other eye operations. And the reason for that is we don't go in the eye itself. We're operating on muscles outside the eye. So there are some risks, however. There's always a chance that you could overcorrect or undercorrect a squint. So you end up with the eye not being exactly as you hoped for, but being too far one way or the other. And that might then require another operation to correct it. Uh, you can sometimes induce or cause double vision, which wasn't there before. Although that is actually very rare, probably just a few percent. There are some issues occasionally with scarring on the surface of the eye. Um, you can get some redness, which doesn't fully disappear. But for most patients, especially if it's their first or second operation, that's not normally a problem. The risk of something serious happening, like losing vision in the eye, is less than one, one in 4,000. So it's really a very safe procedure. The recovery, however, does take a good few weeks for the surface to settle down. This is where squint surgery is a bit different to other eye operations. The recovery process is often quite long. I normally tell patients it's six to eight weeks for the eye to return to a normal state. And during that period, the eye will be uncomfortable, gritty, scratchy, uh, often watery due to the stitches we put in, which take about six to seven weeks to dissolve. People often wonder about pain and uh, most squint surgery is really not painful at all. A few days of basic analgesia like paracetamol and ibuprofen is normally enough. People can get back to work after about seven to ten days, back to driving after about two weeks, back to physical activity and sport after a couple of days. Um, it's a, a slow irritating recovery but it's not painful or too burdensome. And around eight weeks the eye is a lot whiter, you can go back to contact lenses and most people wouldn't know you've had the surgery done. Thank you.